हेलो स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल ड्रॉप अ लाइक शेयर एंड कमेंट दिस इज एक्सरसाइज नंबर 19 ऑफ द प्रोग्रेसिव मंथली मैगजीन फेब्रुवरी 2023 ऑन द स्पीड ऑफ 90 वर्ड्स पर मिनट स्टार्ट आई हैव ग्रेट प्लेजर इन वेलकमिंग यू टू द 8th एनुअल मीटिंग ऑफ द All India Council for Technical Education You are aware that the constitution of the council has recently been revised in order to make it a more compact body and the council as reorganized is meeting today for the first time I will therefore crave your indulgence for a few minutes to refer to the circumstances in which the council was originally set up and the work it has accomplished in the last 7 years it was in january 1944 that the central advisory board of education recommended at the instance of the technical education committee of that body that the government should set up a central organization to stimulate coordinate and control the provision of technical education on an all india basis the government considered that recommendation and set up the all india council of technical education to survey the whole field of technical education and to advise them on measures that might be taken from time to time for development in this field sri sarkar was appointed chairman of the first council and he served for two terms with conspicuous ability i must take this occasion to recall to your memory the services which he rendered as the first chairman of the council i am sure you will all agree that his death is a great loss to the cause of technical education in the country in retrospect we now see more clearly one of the reasons for the establishment of the council after the outbreak of world war 2 the government of the day felt increasingly that they must secure the cooperation of indian national leaders in order to create the necessary enthusiasm for the war effort they tried to associate leaders of the indian national congress with the government but the congress refused the invitation as the terms on which it was issued were unacceptable the government realized that they must have at least a semblance of indian support and therefore invited some selected individuals to come into the executive council they also wanted to prove to the world that even if the congress leaders had not agreed to accept office they were themselves anxious to develop nation building services in india those who accepted the british invitation were thus in a position of advantage and utilized the pressure exercised by them i have watched closely the valuable contribution of the council towards the development of technical education 
in the country since its inception. As Minister of Education, I have naturally been interested in its working and I am happy that my association with the Council will henceforth be much closer than it had been in the past. Some of the landmarks in the history of the Council naturally come to my mind on this occasion. You are aware that it was primarily at the initiative of the Council that the Government of India decided to strengthen a number of undergraduate institutions in various parts of the country by providing grants amounting to about 1.5 crores of rupees. It was also on the recommendations of the council that the government accepted the proposals of the Sarkar Committee to set up four higher institutes of technology in the country. The council is also responsible for undertaking steps to establish closer relations between industries and educational institutions by establishing different types of industrial training schemes. There has been a good deal of expansion of facilities in technical education during the last five years. Most of it has been provided in the normal course in the colleges preparing students for university degrees or college diplomas. I understand that the intake of engineering degree courses has increased from about 2500 to over 3700 in the last five years. The intake in engineering diploma courses has also increased from about 3,000 to almost 5,000 during the same period. In fact, there are some experts who hold that the expansion in facilities has been too rapid and that there is not enough scope for the employment of the persons trained. Others hold equally strongly that even today we do not have an adequate number of properly trained personnel for the various approved projects and purposes. What is therefore needed is a review of our requirements not only in terms of numbers but also in terms of the type of training necessary. In January 1951, the Council appointed a committee to assess the requirements of technical manpower with a view to undertaking this survey and also estimating what the requirements are likely to be for our various development schemes. I understand that as the planning commission had not until recently taken final decisions on the various schemes, the committee was unable to come to firm conclusions. Now that the five-year plan has been approved in principle, I hope that the committee will carry out the task assigned to it as speedily as possible for us.